Welcome to Kingdom Authority with James Alford, your source for insight on spiritual warfare, discernment, and the power of God. Be prepared for your eyes to be opened like never before and walk in the power of God's kingdom. Here is your host, James Alford. Hey, welcome to Kingdom Authority. My name is James Alford. Thank you for tuning in. As always, we'll be talking about subjects related to spiritual warfare, discernment, and the power of God. My guest for today is Apostle Clyde Daniels. Now, I was looking um, at the news and I saw here that on May 1st, the United Methodist Church repealed several anti-LGBTQ rules, including lifting its ban on LGBTQ clergy and same-sex weddings. The issue has been so divisive that the part of the that part of the Methodist Church that opposes it has formed an entirely new denomination called the Global Methodist Church. And so looking at this article, it saddens me because we're seeing so much false doctrine um, entering into the church. We're seeing so much of this divide, even along these lines, something that, you know, we 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 never we didn't see this 30, 40. 50, 60 years ago, now it's becoming commonplace, even in mainline denominations, where churches are being divided uh, in something that should not be a, a division of the church. We should all be on the same page with this issue. And so today I have yes, Apostle Clyde Daniels with me today, and we're going to be talking about defending the church from false doctrines. What do you think about this story, um, Apostle Daniels? Um. You know, it's really, it's, it's challenging for me personally because um, I know what the scriptures tells us of regarding LGBT and it doesn't use those letters. It talks about men uh, seeking uh, utilization with men, ungodly ways, mm -hmm. women with women, and really just turning against the ways of God. This position um, is dangerous for one because I think it sets a precedence on how they, the world will persecute the church for standing up for the gospel and the truth of God's word. Uh, I was just looking at their website and they're, they're really pushing a worldly perspective. I don't even want to call it secular, but a worldly perspective of inclusion that says basically if you feel that this is okay with you then we accept it. Well, that's the Unitarian doctrine. Right. And, and we all know the Unitarian faith accepts all things. Right. So what's next? What's next when it comes to that? But it's, you know, it's the age we're living in and the fight where the deception came in at, they're using not just civil rights and the civil rights movement. Now they're calling it basic human rights. Absolutely. I definitely think it's a um, device from the from the pits of hell. I mean, it, yeah. it is, you know, churches were divided amongst, uh, have been divided amongst doctrinal lines for a long time. Um, but many times the divide was based on things that neither one of them probably would miss, miss going to heaven based on their, their division alone, just on simple uh, miss, you know, misunderstandings of doctrine or just, just disagreements on basic uh, scripture. Um, but now with this, these types of things coming in and dividing churches, it's like Satan has gained a, a very strong foothold in the church. Um, and it's, it's taken the church down the roads that I, I know many, um, if, if, if you could bring back some pastors and leaders from a hundred years ago, you know, 300 years ago, they all probably would, would be amazed on how much, uh, today's modern church, the Christian church, um, the types of things they're allowing to come into the church. And yeah. um, I, I share your sentiment uh, when you talk about the Unitarian church. I had a opportunity to actually go to a Unitarian church um, on some business. Um, and I was actually able to sit in there and talk to a person that was an attendee there um, who were there doing business on, on some other matters. Um, but yeah, they allow anything. Unitarians, pretty much, if you're a witch, you can go to a Unitarian church. You can dress up as a witch um, and go to a Unitarian church. It's very much so outside of uh, 
the Christian uh, doctrine, Christian understanding. I don't even know why people even call it Christian um, because it's religious. We receive everything. It's right. all religions almost. Um, and, and, and so to see this type of thing happen in these mainline denominations, I, I asked myself, what happened? What, what is happening? You know, it's really, it's, it's really perplexing because of the fact there is literally a position that the United Methodist Church in particular took in 2016 to uphold the ban against homosexuality practices, same-sex marriages, clergy homosexuality. So we're talking about, they wrote a book in 2016. And so we're talking eight years later, they basically mm-hmm. said, let's get rid of our stance. And they removed the f- complete bans on gay clergy, same-sex marriages. And they. Uh, I, I was reading one person said uh, about the lightning speed of the changes. Uh, one reverend said, um, it didn't take days, honey. In other words, there's been there's been a consistent activism for over 50 years to really push this agenda into the church. Now, it's one thing to say into society. It's another thing to say into government. But you're literally saying, we want to push this into the Christian worldview of of human life, which is man and woman, how God created us. And so that's the deception because it literally has been a work in progress of the enemy, as you said, from the pits of hell to really bring this forth and bringing acceptance in a modern society that looks at the words of the scripture as either outdated or wrong because we have progressed. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you're right. I mean, Satan has definitely been trying to work his way into the church since since the beginning, it's been from the beginning of time, he's trying to. He's been trying to yeah. destroy the church. Um, when he when he came for Adam and even the beginning, and even how he tried Jesus. So it, throughout time, and Satan has definitely been trying uh, to penetrate and to destroy uh, the works of God. And you know, it's it's it, you know, and, and the sad part about it is, is that you know, it, when you become a minister, man, you. You know, especially when you want to lead a church, man, you take on a shepherd mentality or you should yeah. take on a shepherd mentality. Your your primary goal um, as that shepherd, that leader of a church body is to, is to protect and to guide and to nurture uh, spiritually those that God has put in your church's care. Um, yes. And so it, it's it, it makes me think about how these people who are working to get in, because it had to be a leadership shift for this to be able to get into the church. It couldn't come through just a member being like, oh, I want to see something different. It had to come through the leaders. Um, and so Satan has been working to raise up leaders in that church. And of course, we knew there was a big divide. So there were there were a group of leaders who were against it. And then there mm-hmm. was a group that was for it. But they, but these are leaders on both sides. And so you had some leaders who wanted it up in the church, and you had some leaders who didn't. And so the ones who wanted it, they departed. I mean, the ones that did not want it, they departed. Um, yeah. And the ones that wanted it stayed. But these are all leaders. These are all people who were, who were given the task uh, of overseeing the Lord's church. And so when we think about defending the church from false doctrine, it starts with, you know, it starts with the leaders and what their intent is, what their heart is, what their vulnerabilities are. You know, I um, saw a story many years ago. There was a, uh, I think he had, was a method. He was either a Methodist or a Baptist pastor, but um, his son had become homosexual and his son mm-hmm. wanted him to be a part of his wedding. And he went in with, with, and, and was a part of the wedding. And it changed his view. He had always been against homosexuality and homosexual marriage. But when he went to his son's wedding, when he married another man, it convinced him. He said, well, you know, I love my son so much. I could not imagine that God would send him to hell because he just wants to be loved. And I just thought about, man, how wicked, how wicked Satan is. Um, That he uses things like that 
to change people who have been given charge over the Lord's church, that they may give up the scripture, that they may give up on the doctrine that God has given them and turn to, to lies and deceit and things that are driven by emotion in the flesh. It just, it, it really saddens me. Yeah. And you know, what's really scary is that while this makes the news, this makes the media, you know, I searched on Google just to pull up some interesting facts about the United Methodist Church, their decisions, things in that nature. Uh, the scary part is all the other false doctrines. That's the enemy is really trying to subplant into the church, into the Christian worldview uh, from false religions, uh, the idea of spirituality. And uh, there, there's a theological term about the practice of spirituality, which basically means live out our faith uh, in Christ. They're taking it now to search ancient spirituality in the ways of uh, our ancestors or people's ancestors to enter to show, hey, God created us this way. And that's where it's getting really deceiving because the lines are blurred where if we can't see a clear uh, plumb line between homosexuality in the church we're never going to see anything that sounds like scripture being taught and people I, told, I just told this to someone the other day people forget this when the devil tempted Jesus he didn't tell Jesus of any lies he used scripture but he was right. manipulating and twisting the truth that's right that's right and so people are being manipulated and twisted by scriptures because there's false interpretations, misinterpretations, wrong interpretations, and it's causing first and foremost the weak ones to fall off. But then it's also impacting people to the point where I know this man, this young, this boy, he's not young any longer, but he's our, our age group. But he served under a very prominent bishop. He traveled, he he was on when his ministry was on TV, he was there on TV praying in tongues. I had a conversation when he told me he don't even know if he has a soul anymore because of the deception. That's crazy, man. It, it's, it's it's sad out here, and I'm going to read the scripture to you. It says in 2 Timothy 4 and 1, the Bible speaks of it. I charge you therefore before God and Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. It says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, extort, with all long suffering and doctrine. It says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having its years, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You know, I, the Lord showed me a couple of years ago um, how the enemy has worked his way into the church. He started, the enemy worked his way in by twists, twists of doctrine, twists of understanding, twists of mindset, you know, and, and he's working his way to where, it is now even getting to a place where it's a whole gaping hole, meaning that things that are obviously against God are now being allowed in. But it started off with if you ever, if you ever had an outfit and you had like a, a, a string coming off your outfit, you know how it is when you first look at the string. This looks like it's a little small string, but you know then you pull on it. What does it do? It starts to unravel. Okay. It started off small, but as you pull it, it begins to unravel and, and un take the weaves of that garment apart. And all of a sudden, whereas you didn't have a hole before, now you have this big gaping hole where you can just stick your hand in there, you know. And, and and so that's how the enemy has attacked the church. He brought in, I remember when they had the whole name it, claim it stuff into the, in the <laughs> church, when they had the whole vanity and the church was driven, half, no, I won't say half the people, but a lot of people was driven by, you know, uh, what can God do for me naturally? How can he help me financially? And so people were, you know, jumping on those types of things and, and all different other types of things were working its way into the church where, you know, it you were kind of always on the edge, like maybe some half of that is is right. Like maybe, you know, with faith, God will bring things to you, but it was, it was a defiled teaching in there where it was off. It wasn't completely wrong, 
but it was off. If you, if you understand what I'm saying, there were pieces and parts, just like you're saying with Satan. He quoted scriptures of Jesus. He didn't come in with, with just completely obvious things that was off. He came in quoting things, but there was a defilement behind it. Okay. And mm -hmm. that was the, but that's the start. And then it gets to a place, like you said, where now, you know, the people are having churches where they just let anything in the church where it's, it's not just little twists of doctrine. It's literally things that we, the Bible speaks directly against. For instance, I know this church, they let a, a, a witch, a literal witch, be yeah. on the, the leadership staff. They call themselves a, a Christian church. Yeah. You know, that's, 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 a, that's a broad thing to allow in the church. That's not a twist of scripture somewhere. That's literally just denying the, the faith of, of our Lord Jesus Christ and allowing damnable, the Bible calls it damnable heresies into the church. Let, let me tell you, it's so interesting you brought that up about the witch, uh, the psychic that they brought on staff. Uh, we had worked with this uh, minister here, uh, and they was going to do a New Year's prayer, New Year's Eve prayer, bringing in uh, the new year. And they planned, we met with the people, uh, the different people was leading prayer. And there's this one person, initially, nothing seemed off. Nothing seemed off at all. But you know how you just get that something's not right in your, your spirit? Absolutely. So, you know, my wife and I were getting that. And I'm going to be honest with you. I just thought it was, you know, this is a younger person. This person is probably um, fighting for recognition in the faith, you know, recognition as, as a, as a minister of the gospel. I can't remember what office she said she held. I uh, it was an evangelist prophet or whatever, but so that's kind of where I initially took it. The week of uh, New Year's Eve, Facebook, she had made a post that at 7 p.m. tonight, I'm going to be doing a prophetic psychic reading. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so I'm like, whoa, what? So I'm like, okay, maybe, okay, maybe she don't know the link. I'm trying to give the benefit of that. I'm not being judgmental. Right. I'm not being critical. I'm you trying thought to... she was just a novice. She'd been a novice in things, right? Right. Because right. I, I, I understand where I live at. I understand what's going on around me. And... So seven o'clock, about seven ten, I jumped on just to kind of that you can go in without actually going on there. You can see it and unmute yourself. I, I mean, I mute the speaker uh, to hear it and listen. So I was listening, and she's literally flipping tarot cards. So the night of, which happens to be my daughter's birthday, and I asked my daughter to sacrifice her birthday. I told her you get the whole rest of the weekend to, to celebrate. Right. I go. We show up. And she shows up. I guess they, they, she got called out on it. And I talked with her. Now, this is the word she explained to me to justify it. I went to my pastors and other church leaders about my gift. And they shunned me. So I turned to the psychics to teach me. Yes. Now, I just, this is how literal deception has invaded the church. You didn't go find a prophetic person. You didn't go find, you know, and it, you know, it's the greater land here. There's, there's a few churches that high level prophetic training and equip people in the prophetic here. Right. You turn to the dark side, psychics, to teach you how to be a prophet for God or prophesy on behalf of God. Well, it, it's, it's the lust for power. It's, it's, it's a lust for, you know, not wanting to, it is a problem with people these days is that people don't want to have to go through any steps to do anything. They want yeah. to get right to what they want. And so they're willing to get it by any means, even if it means compromising their soul. Yeah. You know, she was more interested. She seemed more interested in the power than she was in a relationship with Christ. And, and for years, we've seen people fight for recognition. That's, right. So, but I had never seen anybody that tell me uh, I wanted to deliver a drug addict, so I went to a crack house and used the drugs before. 
I want to be a prophet, so I'm going to go to the ultimate dark side to learn how to be a prophet of God. I've right. never seen that before. Right. And that was, uh, needless to say, I told I told them if she's on their platform, we're not on it. And they had released flyers. I looked at it. I said, my wife and I would not be doing this. And I hate wow. it to be that way, but I'm not going to endorse or put my, you know, let not your name be spoken evil of on behalf of being up there with somebody that's on social media doing readings. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 become it's become crazy like that these days, man. And you know, I I, I knew a, a lady. She was uh, I'm not calling any names, but man, she was she was well known in their in, in the deliverance arena. Mm -hmm. um, she even had one of the biggest uh, names of in ministry, black names in ministry. She was like the person that their church called on when they had very powerful deliverance needs. Yeah. Even to where they would send her to mega churches um, to pray and to deliver pastors. So that's that was the type of of mantle she was apparently walking in at that time. Um, and she actually had come to a service that um, there was a woman's conference that me and my wife attended, and she was there and she she preached. And when she preached, man, the women began to man. I had never seen them like that before in my life. But women all across the room began to manifest, slithering on the floor, all mm -hmm. types of stuff while she was preaching. And so you're thinking, man, such a, a powerful anointing that demons begin to cry out when she begins to preach. So, you know, maybe, you know, a year or so later, maybe maybe about two years later, uh, we I started seeing her talking about with her team and her church and stuff, how she was training her people to be superheroes. And on the surface, it sounded like, okay, you know, that's just the name she's giving it. Oh, we're superheroes. We got superhero training, stuff like that. So on the surface, that's fine. But there was something darker behind it. Um, she actually completely changed and became a Reiki healer, which is mm. new age. And she, she, and she put that as her, um, her, her tag on social media. And and it's now like a Reiki healer, something that's completely separate from the things of God. And so now she's moving, and, and and it made me question and go back and look at all those times, you know, where she where she stirred, or was she involved in this thing back then? But it was so, but her power was so great that it it made the appearance that she was moving out of the power of God, but she was moving out of another spirit. How did she get to this place? And that's the type of question, because this was a person who was very senior and, and he grew up in the church and had been preaching since a young girl and, and was moving in such authority and knew about spiritual warfare, knew about discernment, you know, but still allowed herself to be sucked in by these deceiving spirits. I asked myself, how does that happen? You know, you know, what's really interesting, and that's what I was talking about the other deceptions, the other false doctrines that's creeping into the church. Uh, we encountered a young lady about the Ricky Healy. Uh, and they got, if you, I mean, if you do research, you can see it. They have where you have Christians that literally have said Ricky helped them get closer to God. And I'm like, well, why didn't the Holy Ghost help you get closer to God? And this is how this deception is working against believers because again you know when you have someone that's coming out of that lifestyle you or you have somebody that's been exposed to it and never received deliverance and now you have someone in the church teaching it someone in the church doing it what you're literally saying to them is oh this is of god uh Right. The one psychic that used to come on Montel Williams show and be on the, she helped police find bodies of missing mm -hmm. people. Uh, her her uh, books. I remember doing research on her. I won't say her name, but she was very very popular in the nineties and early two thousands. And she literally calls herself a prophet, but is a known psychic medium. Right, and so this is the kind of the unfortunate reality is this is what we deal with in the church, and when the church 
loses its cutting edge. The church begins to dull itself because it's trying to be accepted and yes. relevant to not relevant to bring change, relevant and ex to be accepted as right. loving. Then we get it. Now we're not hateful people. We love you. We're gonna love you. We're gonna love the demon out of you. We're gonna cast it out of you in our love. Right. And right. and so, but we have to really now begin to look at uh, what is truth. And because those are the words that people use to introduce that slithering deception into the ears and hearts of people. They be like, right. that's truth. Listen, I'm gonna tell you truth. We preach truth and they're preaching false doctrine. I look at it almost like um, the leadership structure of the church is the reason for why we're having these issues. Yeah. Um, because of how the church itself is set up. You know, um, I love pastors. I think pastors are amazing. You know, I think I think they're great for, you know, uh, nurturing and developing and growing the people. Um, but that gift is also known for being um, overly patient and um, flexible, yeah. if, if you understand what I'm saying. And, and so when I say flexible, I'm saying they may allow uh, things to hang around in the church longer than they need to be. Um, and so when you have one leadership gift that tends to dominate a space and the others tend to be absent on all ends, um, I think I think it causes a vulnerability um, in the church and it allows things to creep in because you don't have the fullness of of leadership skills that God had intended uh, for the church to possess. You know, I think that's where most people are. Um, and when I say that, I'm in a Christian leadership class now and we're talking about am I called to leadership? how to recognize the call and I was thought it was interesting how they talked about the two callings or and one call is to uh, preparation and the other call is to actually be commissioned or, or set in place and I think what happens is you have people that may be gifted they, they may have the ability to serve and serves well, serve leaders well, uh, and and now are put in these positions of authority where they don't want the one to rock the boat, they don't want to offend or upset people, so they just become, absolutely they become accepting of things. Um, you know, one of the other aspects that I see how this deception gets into the church is we give entertainers who we know just gave their life to the Lord if they did. I'm just saying uh, I'm not questioning nobody's salvation but if they did. We give them the platform because of their position in entertainment in society. Or money. Or, or, or their money financial status. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. yeah. And so yeah. Especially that. And so now they become a voice that justifies ungodly behaviors because they love God and God right. loves them. Well, right. Jesus said it best, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right. And this is, this is, you know, I, I really don't want to call anybody's name out, but we saw this in the last four years. People having church in their own backyard. Mm -hmm. And then you know, three weeks later, you know, cussing on the rent. Right. Uh, and this is the leadership. Yeah, you see pastors or leaders in the church cursing in the pulpit. There's several that, you know, are cursing in the pulpit. And and it's like people have pulled off their righteousness. Yeah. They have they have forgot the scriptures. It's almost like have you not read the scripture? You know, um, it's one thing to do things, you know, um, in the dark, you know, and it's a whole nother thing 
when you parade in the church. Now I'm not saying one is one is is better to be do things in the dark. That's not that's not true. But the, I'm talking about the boldness. Yeah. The 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 boldness of it to openly. It's it's like it went from a shame. You're doing things, but you're doing it in shame and in, in hiding. Now you're doing it boldly and out in the open. It's almost like you don't care. Well, I think people have lost the fear of the Lord. Right. Now, I understand the word fear is reverence. I understand where that talk about being afraid to approach God. But there needs to be a, a renaissance or a resurgence of understanding that God is the one that can judge you. And he judges according to his righteousness based on what his word tells us. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to get it right. That doesn't mean people won't struggle. Heck, I struggled at one time. Right. But the heart of David was a man after God's own heart, even though he had issues and he failed and sinned against God a few times. But what, right. what, what was different? God, David signed the heart of God, Saul sought the heart of people. And when right. you're working in leadership, seeking the heart of people to make you compromise against the heart of God, you, you run risk. And too many people have become casual with that. And I just, I'm seeing it. I, I told somebody, I, I don't know why I see this and I see it that way, you know, can I just be, you know, like, can we all just get along kumbaya with the the Holy Spirit? And we be like, no, that is not of me. Uh, and right. then you get pastors and leaders. The, the unfortunate reality is who, who sees it and want to do something about it. Just go on the attack of everybody that's different than them. So we got all these right. things happening. Where doctrine, doctrine, is not being sound anymore in people's heart. Right. Well, you know, we all we all need Christ, and we need Christ to come back now, and we need Him to come and rule with the rod of iron. I understand now why He needs to have that rod of iron, if if nothing else, to bring the church into order. Um, it is needed. It is needed so much. Um, I tell you what, I have enjoyed having this discussion with you today. Um, but we got to go and. I want to thank everybody who joined us today. And remember, this is the Kingdom Authority broadcast. My name is James Alford. Um, always happy to have you join us each and every week when we talk about spiritual warfare, discernment, and the power of God. Well, God bless you. We love you. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Kingdom Authority podcast. Join us every week for powerful teachings, insightful interviews, and testimonies of God's power. To contact us for more info on books and articles from James Alford, make sure you go to jamesalford.org.